yes, yet another day of wonderful programming in C++. I sure hope nothing catastrophic happens and makes me nuke my whole project again. <laughs> I know, I'll use object oriented programming. <laughs> It's been four months since the last farmhold devlog, and in terms of progress, we have none. So who's the filthy little time waster that's been sabotaging my progress? Come out of there now, with your hands up! What? So for the past four months, I've been unfortunately doing a lot of spinning my wheels in the dust. The larger reason of why I've made so little progress on Farmhold has been due to a little thing called life. It doesn't leave you with a lot of time. I got a part-time job working at a hockey rink, and also those three months were harvest season, which is the busiest time of the year for me. But yet, even with the time I was able to put into Farmhold, I made very little progress. Huge swaths of my time were spent refactoring and reworking old pre-existing code. Because it seems to me that my mentality of gung-ho dive headfirst into the problem wasn't working so well. The largest saboteur was a little programming concept called object-oriented programming. Now why is object-oriented programming so bad in programming? The common, reasonable person would begin citing reasons and listing facts, but instead, I'm going to draw your attention to Exhibit A. The evidence presented clearly indicates that Python uses object-oriented programming, and now object-oriented programming is bad. Coincidence? I think not. Hey Marty, you made a video saying that object-oriented programming was a fine style. Hey Marty, haven't you always been saying that object-oriented programming object is just fine? Programming I can't so believe bad. that Marty, Marty is a programming object -oriented. Gophers, calm down. Before you guys have a coup and dethrone me, I need to explain. Yes, I did say in the past that object-oriented programming was a fine programming paradigm to use. But, if I can divert your attention back to Exhibit A. Back in 2012, I first started programming, and my first real language was Python. But how is it my first language if Python isn't a real language? Oh well. Now Python relies heavily on a paradigm known as object-oriented programming, where you think of data as objects. Long story short, Python brainwashed me into using object-oriented programming with C++ because it wouldn't relinquish its grips upon my mind. In order to understand the history, we have to go back to an old Discord conversation. As I continually ended up clunking my head against a brick wall, I became suspicious that perhaps object-oriented programming wasn't the way. To test my theory, I hopped onto my Discord server and announced, Data-oriented programming sucks. I'm sticking with object-oriented programming. Lieutenant Synth of the Gopher Army said, There are many people who would murder you for saying that. Just saying, don't say that near Ryan Flurry. Ryan would write a 20 page essay on it and make you read it. Ryan Flurry is a fellow game developer working on his game called The Melodist and also working on a game engine called Telescope. My question was still unanswered, but it was a lead. I jumped over to Ryan Flurry's Discord server in search of answers. I set my status to say, Object oriented programming is better than data oriented programming. Change my mind. It didn't take long before someone took the bait. A user by the name of Believe said, Data oriented programming is better than object oriented programming because it puts the functionality of the code over the organization of the code. It's also easier to wrap your head around. Now, Believe here did make some good points, but I wanted to be sure. So I said, I would argue object-oriented programming makes more sense than data-oriented programming. Ooh, this'll be good. Thinking of in-game objects like a sword as objects makes a lot of sense. In which Believe responded with, Object-oriented programming makes sense until it doesn't. When you have a small piece of code, object-oriented programming can be helpful. But once you start getting into larger programs, concepts like polymorphism and inheritance get in the way of comprehending your code. And at last, this caught the attention of Ryan Flurry himself. In which he said, 
object-oriented programming is not helpful because as the programmer, you don't care that a sword is in the game. That's something the player cares about. You care about the behavior of the sword. In other words, programming is verb-oriented, not noun-oriented. You care that the player has a thing to slash things and subtract from their health, not that it happens to look like a sword. Codifying the nouns in your mental model as types, for example, leads to friction when trying to reuse the verbs. Oh, what he's saying makes so much sense. Because you really want do the slash thing, slashy thing, slash. Not void, do the slashy thing, sword, sword, pointers, sword. I further tested him by saying, have a base weapon class that the sword and mace class inherit. Cast back to a subclass if need be. Then you realize you need to extrapolate that to other types. So then you have to move all of your Imagine code you have to make a base class and then you have to do that. Now one has to move all of your And that's the symbol case. Okay, I'm convinced. Is all of object oriented programming bad? No. Object oriented programming simply doesn't work in the context of games because it relies on something called an inheritance hierarchy. An inheritance hierarchy is essentially a family tree gone wrong. It works kind of the same way a family tree does, in that child classes inherit attributes from their parent classes and grandchildren inherit from their parents and grandparents and so on and so forth. But it quickly spirals out of control and ends up looking more like a family mesh instead of a family tree. There are three main approaches to maintaining any sort of common sense in an inheritance hierarchy model. The first is the messy approach where everything is related to each other in some fashion and it's impossible to have any sort of flexibility at all. The second approach is more of a composition method where all of the base classes are inherited only into extremely specialized subclasses. With this design, you end up creating a ton of subclasses. The third approach is to just dump all functionality into one base class, leaving you with an ambiguous make class. These three designs all have some sort of problem that I don't really like at all, so it's time to shift paradigms. An entity component system avoids a lot of these pitfalls by using a more flexible design. An object in the game is composed of components, and then an entity simply becomes an index of which components tie together. A component is simply data with no functionality, and then the systems modify that data. The entity component system uses a programming paradigm called data-oriented programming, where the emphasis is on the data. Now that I had decided to use the data-oriented programming approach, it was time to write some code, and by write some code, of course, I mean steal some code. I based my ECS pretty tightly around this article I found by Austin Moreland. <laughs> do I smell some source code? Well, don't mind if I do. After skimming through the article, I grabbed the source code and set to work on getting Farmhold to its previous state of completion with the new ECS. Is it not working? Charlie Chunkles. Come on. Yes. Yes. Without too much trouble, I was able to tie Box2D into the ECS, and re implementing a camera that follows the player and a player wasn't terribly difficult. Timber. After fooling around with the physics a bit, I set to work on being able to rotate the camera because that's a functionality I want to have in the game. If I if I rotate, <laughs> there's a funny lesson to be learned here, and I don't know what it is. Hmm. With the new entity component system in place, I feel confident that development speed on Farmhold will increase by significant margins. The main issue I was running into with the object-oriented programming approach was I was constantly hitting my head against the wall wondering who owned what data, where does the data belong. In terms of visual progress, there wasn't much other than a glitchy camera that doesn't work, but hopefully within the next few months that should change. Thank you for watching, and be sure to do your part in the programming war. Enlist now in the elite go for four or else C++ could become obsolete. And now a word from our sponsor, Mick Van Buck. Mick Van Buck Call of the Lighter is both a thrilling and hilarious book. 
One of my favorite chapters is chapter 2, Fuel Tank Fire, which entails the adventures of a pyromaniac that have more or less gone wrong. Mick Van Buck Call of the Lighter is currently available on Amazon right now, and we've just recently finished the audiobook. The audiobook should be available on Audible and iTunes very soon, it is currently just processing right now. But until then, if you want to support the channel and my dad, Peter in Mass, and buy the book today on Amazon using the link in the description. If you want to hear more from Peter and Mast, check the description for a link to his website and to his YouTube channel.